Hello, my name is Salvatore Vinciguerra, and in this video, I'm bringing you to the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts to share with you the Yin Yu Tang Chinese House. The Peabody Essex Museum ranks among one of the top 20 art museums in the United States, and it is also one of the oldest continuously operating museums in our country. Please look in the description box below as I have a separate video just on the museum itself and all of the different galleries that are inside. When you visit the Peabody Essex Museum and you pay for your admission, this Yin Yu Tang Chinese house is not a part of that admission. You do have to separately pay for and schedule your time that you're going to visit this part of the museum. I visited the Peabody Essex Museum in 2019, right before the COVID-19 pandemic. And uh, during the pandemic, it has created some issues with the museum in trying to show off this beautiful house. For example, these are self-guided tours with a little map and so forth, and you can read about all the different rooms that are inside of the house. When I visited, I got to see both floors of the house. However, during the pandemic, the second floor of the house is not open to visitors. So as you can see, these first few pictures are from the first floor of the house, and then I'll be moving to touring the second floor of the house. So now let's talk about a little history of the house, where it is located in China, and who lived in this house. And this is how the home appeared when it was last occupied in the 1980s. In 1996, the Hung family descendants who were living in other towns decided that no one from their family would be returning to their ancestral village. And in order to preserve the house, the Hung family gave their blessing to move the house to the United States and eventually become a part of the Peabody Essex Museum. <laughs> The Yin Yu Tang House was built 200 years ago in the small village of Hong Kong in southeastern China, approximately 250 miles from the city of Shanghai. The owner, a prosperous merchant, was a member of the locally prominent family surnamed Hong. Their home village sits among the hills in the Hanzhou region, long known for its enterprising merchants, imposing mountains, and distinctive architecture. The name Yin Yu Tang has several meanings. One refers to the owner's wish that this house would shelter his descendants far into the future. That wish was fulfilled. Yin Yu Tang was home to eight generations of the Hung family. At any one time, as many as 30 people from three different generations lived here, almost all women and children. The young men worked as merchants in cities a distance from the village to support their families. The journey to these cities was dangerous, and the men lived there for extended periods of time, sometimes for as long as six years. In their absence, the women, children, and elderly were the primary residents of the house. While caring for the younger and older generations, the women maintained the six-bedroom home, farmed vegetables, and raised chickens and pigs. Yin Yu Tang was oriented in the village of Hong Kong according to the principles of the Chinese practice of Feng Shui to ensure a harmonious relationship with the landscape. Typically, Chinese homes face south, letting in the sunlight and more yang, or masculine energy. Yin Yu Tang, however, was positioned facing to the north and towards the direction that the village stream flowed into the village, considered to symbolize prosperity the rolling hills behind. This geographical feature made the unusual position of the Yin Yu Tang more auspicious. Music 
The first floor bedrooms have intricately carved lattice windows to look out onto the two fish pools in the central courtyard. These details tell us as much about the aspirations, identity, and creative expression of the Hung family as they do about the architectural heritage of the region. Look carefully at the decorations and carvings with scenes from Chinese operas and animals. They were made to help protect the Yin Yu Tang from bad omens. There are several images of dragons, which are important mythical creatures in Chinese culture because they symbolize imperial power. There are also carvings exemplifying peace and long life for the Hung family. On the contrary, some of the rooms are adorned with posters promoting communist propaganda. In the era of Maoist China, families were required to replace pictures of family ancestors with posters of Mao Zedong as a way of supporting him and the Communist Party. If not, they would get in trouble by the government by being sent to re-education camps, prison, or they were executed. Other fascinating features in the courtyard are its stone fish ponds. They both have colorful koi fish, typically found in Chinese gardens. In the house's heyday, the family used the stone fish ponds for fish that would later be used for food. They principally cooked the fish for special occasions like weddings and New Year celebrations. As of now, the koi fish are exclusively used for decorative purposes, but they are worth watching. This house is the only example of historic Chinese vernacular architecture located in North America. As such, it provides an example of the type of dwelling an average family in China would have lived in. The Yin Yu Tang Hall of Plentiful Shelter was built in the late 18th century during the Qing Dynasty from 1644 to 1911. The five-bay, two-story residence was typical of its region, built of timber frame construction with a tile roof and exterior masonry walls of sandstone and brick. The house is about 47 feet 6 inches by 52 feet 5 and a half inches, not including the kitchens. In addition to the 16 bedrooms, there are also two reception areas, a storage room, and a courtyard in the center. The family's well-documented genealogy and the accumulation of furnishings passed down from eight generations offer us the opportunity to understand historical changes in China as they affect individuals in their daily lives and cultures on a global scale. Visitors have a chance to go inside some of the bedrooms. One of them was where the master of the house and all of his immediate family members slept. It is impressive to know that many people slept in a pretty small room with only one bed. This bedroom in particular looks like it's more westernized and has some pre-revolutionary China aspects to it. The room is festooned with European wallpaper and 1930s advertisements of glamorous Shanghainese pin-up girls wearing flashy clothing and makeup. It is unbelievable that this room survived the Cultural Revolution, a time where Chairman Mao wanted to rid China of anything related to Western culture and its pre-communist past.
Some of the other rooms shown at the Yin Yu Tang are its meeting areas and kitchen. The meeting areas are where the family gathered. They would either chat, play mahjong, a traditional Chinese game, and prepare foods. They would also use one of the meeting areas to pray to their ancestors and Quan Yin, the Buddhist goddess of compassion and mercy. In fact, the house has an altar dedicated to the goddess with a porcelain figurine of her. One of the great aspects about visiting this part of the museum is that you didn't have to feel rushed and touring the house. You could spend as much time as you wanted to looking at the various furnishings and try to imagine what it would have been like to live in this house. For example, there's no electricity in this house and they would have lived without electricity. And in the kitchen, there's a stove with wood and fire. In. And that's how the family would have cooked back in the day their delicious meals and their favorite foods of the Chinese cuisine. I would also wonder, as a musician, what it would have sounded like with a lot of people living here and it also being in the setting of a country and a rural area where there would have also been not only farm animals but also the nature that would have been in the surrounding areas. This is Salvatore Vinsigura. Thank you for watching this video on the Yin Yu Tang Chinese House located at the Peabody Essex Museum in Salem, Massachusetts. Don't forget I have a separate video on the Peabody Essex Museum and you can find that link in the description box below. Again, thank you for watching this video and if you like it, please like this video, subscribe to my channel, and have an amazing day. Thank you.